Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today, I'm honored to have two ladies with me from Happy Hollow, and uh, they just did a big remodel, and they've got some interesting uh, friends with us today, and Vanessa Roger, am I saying your last name right? You've got it. Okay. And Jenna Sorrellas? Sorrels. Sorrels. Sorry about that. Um, and then you've got an interesting friend here with you, so why don't we, uh, why don't we go ahead and Instead of doing a self-introduction, we'll do that in a minute. Why don't we introduce your friend here? I'd love to. Thank you, Heather. This is Takuli, and Takuli is a great horned owl. He's one of about 35 ambassadors in the Happy Hollow Education Department, and he is with us, and he goes out to different schools and libraries. He's used as an educational tool to help kids understand conservation and the role that these animals play in the environment. So Takuli is uh, one of our good ambassadors, <laughs> and uh, he's uh, looking around, and having a good time. Beautiful uh, Takuli. Happy You're to so be here. Oh, he's opening his mouth and talking to us. <laughs> yeah, that's a way of him cooling off a little bit. Ah. Uh, so birds, like birds of prey, they can't sweat like people do. So in order to, similar to dogs panting, that's how he actually ventilates uh, air. Oh, so he's warm right now. He's a little warm, but that's okay, because that's how he cools off. And it looks like he has ears, but they're not ears. They are not ears. So his ears are very different than ours. Our ears are on the side of our heads, and yeah. we have these big flaps of skin. An owl actually has holes on the side of his head for ears, but the hole on the right side is up a little bit, and it faces forward. The hole on the left side is down a little bit, and it faces backwards which gives him the ability to hear everything going on above him, below him, all the way around him without even moving his head. So when he's flying, he probably has a heightened sense of where his prey is. Absolutely, and he can hear a little brown mouse break a twig on the ground a quarter of a mile away. Wow. Tell us about his wing. Is this, I think this is important to talk about this and appropriate behavior with children and and how to treat animals, et cetera. So tell us a little bit about what happened with his wing. Absolutely, Takuli was actually wild born. So he's from the wild. And one night, one evening, some kids walking by in the South Bay saw him sitting in his tree, waking up, getting ready to go hunting. And they had a pellet gun. And unfortunately, they had target practice. They did hit him. And uh, some other kids saw what happened, got some adults, took him to a wildlife doctor. And the wildlife doctor was able to save his life but there are still pellets <clears throat> in his wing. So because of that damage done to his wing, he can no longer fly. So he's come into people's care, and that's how he came to Happy Hollow. Well, he's beautiful, and he's, he's definitely a little bit warm. Um, so if you, uh, we, can, we can leave him while, you, while we're talking, or you can put him back away if he's more comfortable. And so Vanessa, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? I know you've been with Happy Hollow for a long I, time. I have. So I'm, I've actually been with Happy Hollow almost 19 years, and three before that as a volunteer, as a docent. So my passion is animals, animals in conservation, nature, environment, the whole green movement, sustainability, that's, and it all comes together perfectly at Happy Hollow as well. And you've been there like 18 years or 20? I have, I so have. Long, and did you start off in marketing or what did you start off? I did, you know, I started as a volunteer and, and a lot of people say, how do you get your foot in the door at a zoo? And I, I think the, a lot of people that actually started at Happy Hollow have started as volunteers. So whether it's a docent program or a special event volunteer, there's lots of opportunities to, to get in you know, at a zoo or a local wildlife center. So that's how I started and then grew the job from there. And um, they recently, I guess she's, she's getting the next <laughs> friend out. <laughs> Um, they recently just did a, a remodel too, and did. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't even realize it was LEED certified. I remember hearing about it, and I remember there was a, an event going on um, to show everybody with that. But, but we. But tell us about that. So in 2008, we actually closed the. <laughs> it's, it's so hard. It's so cute. It is so cute. Yeah. So in 2008, we actually closed the doors to Happy Hollow, and that was the first time we've ever done that. 
and we closed down for almost two years, did a complete remodel of the facility, and went down to the ground in certain areas, added more acreage to the facility, and then <laughs> rebuilt entirely green. So we are the first LEED certified, gold LEED certified zoo and amusement park in the country. In the U.S. And who's our friend here now? And he's talking to us too. I'd love to introduce you to Spike. Spike is a coendu, which is a big fancy word for prehensile-tailed South American porcupine. So we have many porcupines all over the world. We have the North American, <laughs> This is the South American, and they're very different from the North American in the fact that they live in the rainforest and high up in the trees. So he's got a prehensile tail, which means his tail is a safety rope. It grabs things. It's pretty cool. And I wish I had one, actually. Now, if you were to put him down, would he, would he uh, be okay or no? Well, he'd be very curious. He actually is much more secure because he knows I'm his tree and I'm his safety right okay. now. So this is his safety spot and the cute noises he's making is the way he communicates. I think everybody needs to see a porcupine nose and That nose close. is amazing. It's, it looks like he's smelling as yes, little whiskers are going. Exactly. Porcupine's a very poor eyesight so he relies on a sense of smell and his gigantic ears which are really hard to see. Maybe you can pull him over that way too a little bit. Absolutely. Maybe they can get a little close shot Absolutely. with your shirt in the background of his whiskers. I don't know if they can. These are the big whiskers. Yeah, I don't know if they can get a close shot of that. That is amazing. He's so cute. Now, he is covered in 15,000 quills. These quills are made of the same thing your fingernails are made out of, a protein called keratin. And at the end of each quill is a barb. These barbs are made for going into the enemy and sticking into the enemy. You may get a close-up of my shirt. I've got a oh, few quills there. That's got to not feel very good. <laughs> well, luckily they haven't gone far enough, but the, those barbs actually latch on. I guess your, your padding a little bit helps in the bra. A little bit. We're, we're in good shape. You I'm pretty used to it. You do a little bit extra padding when you're, when you're working mm -hmm. with him. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. So myth is that porcupines, people think they can shoot their quills, but if you can't shoot your fingernails, they can't shoot their quills. The only way to get quilled by a porcupine is to physically touch him. So now, is he nervous? So that's why he lost a couple of them? Or? No, actually, because I'm having him lean up against me. Ah, I'm okay. his tree. I'm his safety. So okay. that's no problem. So cool. So now, have you always worked with animals? Have you, how long have you been doing this? I've worked with animals in several different capacities for about 20 years from veterinary medicine to training animals for movies and TV, uh, falconry, and a uh, long time in wildlife education, working with animals coming in from the wild that have been injured or they've been abandoned, they've been um, confiscated because they're illegal, and working with them to become education animals just like Spike here. So I've been doing that for close to about 20 years and uh, been happy to have landed at Happy Hollow for about three years now. 20, you look so young. 20 years isn't possible. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you didn't say that one. I said that. So, yeah, he looks like he's, he's getting more comfortable. He's not making the noises anymore. Does no. that mean he's more comfortable? No, he's just hanging out. And, in fact, porcupines are nocturnal, so he actually hasn't woken up very much yet. Oh. He'll catch so he us in a few hours. <laughs> yes. He'll get his coffee. He'll wake up, and he'll be a very active little porcupine. But right now, he's just... Just hanging out with me. And is he heavy? He weighs about 12 pounds. So you're getting a little bit of a workout. You know, it's a lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice. So Vanessa, tell us a little bit more about Happy. Tell us about Happy Hollow and what's going sure. on there. So a lot of people, Happy Hollow has been around for 50 years. We're celebrating our 51st anniversary this wow, year. Wow, I didn't know that. Long time. Uh, it's a combination amusement park and zoo an accredited zoo. So it's 16 and a half acres. Uh, it's got uh, uh, seven rides. Three of them are for entire families, not just for little ones. And we have rides that are specifically for little ones as well. Uh, reservable party areas, play, great play areas. We have this one play area called the Redwood Lookout, which is multi-level, three levels high. You can be a ranger and, and, and climb everywhere, slide everywhere. It's a great play area. We also have uh, a zoo, and it's a split zoo. Since the remodel, we have a zoo. We call it the zoo on the hill, and then we have the zoo in the hollow, which is the lower zoo, which was the original footprint. Uh, we have home to jaguar, capybaras, monkeys, lemurs, 
porcupines, uh, pygmy goats, we have a great contact area. So there's something to do for, for everyone in the family. Let's bring up the first slide right now. I think we have a couple slides of the, of the entrance of the, uh, the zoo. Oh, this is, is this you? This is not you. No, that's Heather, uh, a counterpart of mine at Happy Hollow. 